This is an experiment to become familiar with the behavior of a microscope. The object which we're examining with the microscope will be the tiny coils in the filament of this flashlight bulb. The objective lens of the microscope is here. It's an achromatic lens. There's a screen on which to obtain the real image of the filament, a magnified real image by the objective. And finally, the eyepiece, which is a magnifying glass, uh, which one can view the real image. One will be able to view the real image formed on the screen or the real image in space when the screen is removed. In addition, there's an iris diaphragm, which an adjustable iris diaphragm, which one can interpose at various places to see its effect on the image. Before one can do much looking, it's important that the microscope be rather accurately aligned, aligned in two respects. One, that the height of the filament, the center of the objective, and the center of the eyepiece all be the same distance above the optical bench. One way of ascertaining that is to adjust the height approximately by looking at it, then put the screen in here, and on the screen one can see a spot of light. If we look, look in, this should be quite clear. You can see the spot of light. If I change the intensity with the variac, then the light gets, spot gets brighter or dimmer. Now, that's fairly well centered in the screen. Let's move the screen back away from the lens. We begin to form an image, and it stays centered. If it were not centered, for example, if the light were off to one side, when they were very close, it wouldn't affect the spot very much. But as I pull it back, then it would get way off to one side, and I'd have to readjust it. The same with the height. If the height is right when it's close, and also when it's centered when it's far away, then um, the alignment is quite good. Having done that, I can then look at the uh, image of the, on the screen here with the eyepiece. So that then we will look at it under magnification, and we will see what it looks like. If I set this here, I get a good image. I can focus it on there, and then I will have to adjust the eyepiece slightly so that when I look in, I can see. Let's see what I see now very little. I'm going to focus it as well as I can. There I see it on the screen, and I'm going to readjust the eyepiece. You see the graininess of the screen, and there is the real image. If I put the di well, let's see what happens when I pull this out. There I see the image again. Perhaps I can focus it a little better. Not much. There's the magnified coil of the filament. I can adjust the intensity so that it becomes clearest with the very act. Then putting the screen back in, I can see the real image once more. If I want to, I can now put in the diaphragm here and close down the aperture and see what the effect of that is on the image. Let's look at that. As I now it's so dim, I'll turn up the variac just a little more. I have a very small hole. Now let's look at the quality of the image when I take the screen out. It's much better. Perhaps, again, I can refocus. And you can see the effect on the quality with various sides. Let me open up the diaphragm and then close it again. And you can see what its effect will be. In addition to the, uh, this shows the quality of that image shows that it's quite well aligned. In addition to the, the uh, obser these observations, one can actually measure the magnification. If I put that in and perhaps open up the diaphragm so that I have a bright image there, let me turn this up then I can see the Im real image here, the arc of the filament, and I can measure that same distance on the filament here with the ruler. By comparing this size and that size, I can find what the actual magnification of this objective lens is. I can check that by using the lens formula. I can measure from the center of the lens to the filament and from the center of the lens to the real image, and again, the ratio of those distances should give me the magnification. Then. I can independently determine the focal length of this magnifying glass, and using the standard, or using your knowledge of the behavior of a magnifying glass, one can find out what the magnification of the eyepiece is. That should give the total magnification, and from that, you should be able to calculate what the 
uh, actual size of the filament wire is and what the uh, sp uh, filament spacing is. In addition to this one magnification, we can also change the magnification by changing the position of the, f of the object and making the telescope longer. Let's look in and see what happens as we do that. I'll take this screen out and we'll focus it. There's the magnification at this point. Now I'll move a little closer. Let me cut this aperture down to get a little better focus. Now let me move it closer and see what happens. I'm going to move it closer than this. Now let's watch the magnification. There it's becoming less. And similarly, if I move it very far away, way out here, quite far away. Now let's look at the magnification again. As I do this, I have a, mu a much larger magnification. Again, not a very good image, but I can improve the quality by cutting down the size of the aperture and refocusing. Finally, in the, the um, position of the eye itself, you will find is important. If the eye is not in the right place, you'll still be able to see the filament, but it'll just make a tiny spot on your retina. Uh, the eye has to be very carefully aligned also along the optic axis. Let's get that, the image in focus again, and then see what happens as we put and pull the eye away. And the eye is going to go this way, and then we'll look in and see what happens to the filament. Let's look at that again. There's the filament, but instead of having the full image on the eye, there's just a tiny, tiny little hole that you can see. That's about all we can see. It's all there, but it's hard to find. If I move the eye off the axis just a little bit, the, I wouldn't see anything. Now, as I move the eye closer again, watch the, um, the field of view fill up the whole space on the camera, and the same thing will happen on your, with your eye. Again, if it's too close, you will get into the same sort of trouble with a very narrow field of view, so the eye has to be put. You'll have to play with it and see just where to put your eye and understand what's happening. That's about all there is to this experiment.